<laughs> okay. Um, so knowledge is great when it works. Huh? Um, okay. So I'm I'm super passionate about teaching chess, and I I'm just really excited about uh, being here. Thank you guys for welcoming me to uh, teach this class and everything. Um, so yeah, I'm I'm rated uh, about like 2100 on on chess.com, and I, I play regularly, and I, I read a, a book actually each morning called like um, uh, How to Calculate Chess Tactics. So the content of that one is like pretty advanced, and um, I'm not going to be, be talking about that. I'm going to be showing a game here that I've been um, teaching for basically like 10 years. I've, I've taught this game probably like uh, like a couple hundred times, and I just absolutely love sharing it. It's such an inspiring and instructive example of um, how Gary Kasparov won this game back in uh, 1982. So um, really, this is going to be a great game for you guys. And um, I'm also going to send a, a link in the chat where you guys can sign up if you're interested um, to take more uh, adult classes. We, we run classes on uh, Thursdays at 6 p.m. And it would love, uh, I'd just love to expand the club uh, that much more. I'm going to be here today until 6. And then I'm going to do this again next week, too. And um, next week, I, I can even offer to play like a, a blindfold game if anybody's interested in that. And so um, I would kind of do that towards the end class. Okie dokie. Well, without further ado, um, unless there's any like uh, questions or anything, I'm just going to get right into it. Do you guys have any, uh, any any comments or questions before I get started? Um, Ryan, if you can send me that link later on as well, I can share that with a uh, uh, for our email list as well to just read okay. further. Yeah, that'd be fantastic for sure. Okay, so basically, I'm just going to talk about this game, and then um, I'm just going to pause at certain intervals and ask you guys what, what plan uh, or move you would suggest in that position. I'm going to try to aim my questions for about that 1300 rating. Um, since we had a couple of outliers, um, I probably won't have questions that are geared um, towards your guys' level as much, but I'll see if I can, um, you know, kind of, kind of um, provide some stuff that will be interesting to you as well. Um, so, yeah, I'm just going to get right into it. This is a, a game with Gary Castro. This was back in 1982, and just a, a great example of um, you know how to, how to play at a really high level. Um, and then I also have some additional context on this from a, a book that I like to use, um, just uh, by uh, Yasser Surawan, who actually grew up here in Seattle too. Um, so, in 1982, the young Gary Kasparov was emerging as one of the strongest grandmasters in the world. Um, the 1982 Moscow tournament represented his um, greatest test to date. Playing against a whole galaxy of chess stars, Kasparov earned second prize behind world champion Karpov. In the game here, I discussed um, what was critical to Kasparov's high standing. He convincingly took apart the Romanian grandmaster, Florin, in the uh, best game of the tournament. All right, let's go ahead and check it out. So uh, Kasparov's playing white, and try, if you can, to maybe even conceal, like, these moves so you don't see them, but um, that's what I'm going off of. Okay, so it starts at D4, knight to F6, and then after this, C4, pawn to E6, knight F3, B6. And so this is a little bit of an, an offbeat reply. It's called the uh, Queen's Indian defense against uh, the, the D4 opening here. After B6, knight C3. Um, or next turn a second here, knight c3, d5, and then takes, and then recaptures right here. And so essentially in this position, white really wants to play the move pawn to e4, but he can't do that because that move fails tactically. So um, how should he continue here? What would be a good move? Would e3 let him develop the white bishop and hopefully castle? Yeah, that'd be a great alternative. Um, in the game, he didn't choose that, but good suggestion. Mm, other suggestions in chat, I'm going to go through and read them. Uh, is bishop d2, there is knight to e5 uh, twice as well. I think it's too yeah, early for knight like to e5. It. You could just push it with the pawn, right? That's true. Yeah, it'd be too early for this. Um, generally, you don't want to move the, the same piece twice in the opening, and, and this position is no exception. Bishop d2 is okay. It's a little bit a little bit meek, but both those moves are tactically sound, just uh, not the move chosen by Kasparov. Try again. What, was queen c2 already suggested? No, and that's the move. Nice job. All right, so so then follow-up question here. How does the move queen c2 help with the uh, the advance of the e4 pawn? Um, well, it gives support. It defends e4, so it won't get right. k 
captured. Right. There you go. So so if if we if we didn't have this support and we just play pawn to e4 right away, then knight takes, pawn takes, and then here we're down a pawn for nothing. So got to have that extra support on that square. After queen to c2, then the opponent goes c5, and we can uh, we can ignore this move and just continue with our plan anyway. E4, knight takes. Uh, b6, c3. Clearly, um, this move is, is much, much better than going queen to c3. Uh, we're bringing a pawn towards the center. We're maintaining that guard over the e4 pawn. After this, he goes bishop right here, and then we go um, and, and make another move here. What, what do you think is a, is a good reply? Astron is suggesting bishop d3, maybe? Yeah, bishop d3 is a solid bet. That's probably the second best move here. Michael is suggesting bishop b5 check, and then bishop, yeah, bishop c6, bishop. maybe, after that. Yeah, yeah, good. And so this, yeah, this is the right answer here. So bishop b5 check. Now he's going to come back actually to d3 in a second, but he goes here check first, and then after bishop goes here, then he goes like this. Now this wasn't an accident. He did this intentionally. So it's a little bit of finesse, um, and it just makes a small difference, but it, it's still, um, you know, important, especially at a high level of chess. So um, he did this because after um, forcing the bishop to go to to um, to or provoking the bishop to go to c6, and now uh, he, when he comes back, this obstructs the um, the, the harmonious development of, of the opponent. So as we're you know building our own pieces and optimizing our, our the general effectiveness of our own army, we want to kind of simultaneously be um, constricting and, and um, making it the opposite for the opponent. And that's what we're doing here. The, the knight can no longer come to its ideal square here on on c6, and that's going to help us to get an advantage. After bishop to d3. Well, why Knight play to c6 or d7 instead of bishop c6? Yeah, it's a great question here. So, um, so you said uh, knight c6 or knight d7? Yeah, that, that's a great question. Let me think about that. So, so yeah, like, um, so we we provoked this move, and so if Black is aware of how that um, kind of creates some disharmony, then why would he why would he not do that? Great question. Let me think about it, and I'm just going to use the help of the analysis engine here. Knight to c6. Hmm. Okay, so we can't play d5. This won't work. We don't have support there. Um, Computer suggesting queen to a4. This seems kind of like a cheapo. So I'm, I'm curious about this myself. It's a great question. Let me see how we can answer this here. Um, so after here, then then rook to c8, and then we can grab a free pawn. I think we can get away with that. We can also play knight to e5. So surprisingly enough, this is more than just a, ch a cheapo. We end up with some significant pressure on this diagonal. Um, so I think that's convincing there. The the other alternative suggestion was knight to d7. Again, it's a great question. I'm curious about it myself. Oh, this one's easier to answer. Okay. Um, let's see. Here. So you go here. Okay. So you have an attack on the knight. You can guard it this way. So it's already kind of moving backwards. But it's even more than that. We're going to be able to go here here, and then bishop to f4, creating a threat on the rook. Cool. So because of these ideas, um, black ends up in an even worse position. It's a great question. I've talked this many times. I don't think I've had that one yet. Um, so after here, check. We have provoked this move. Bishop comes back here to d3. After this, now knight to d7. We're going to go ahead and get castled. Uh, h6. After going h6, then we go um, and just bring in a new piece. Um, which piece do you think that should be? And where should it go? Um, Suggestions that we have, that. yeah, black bishop moving. We have rook to e1, maybe. Uh, we have, yeah, bishop to f4 or e3 suggestions. Mm -hmm. These are all solid suggestions, but uh, not the move chosen in the game. Thank you for reading that that comment section. I don't I don't know how to uh, configure it so I can read that and share at the same time. Yeah, all good. Uh, we have rook b one maybe. Rook b one I don't like quite as much. You kind of you kind of aiming at a brick wall. Maybe, I feel like uh, rook to d one. Down though. 
Sorry, so work to D1 because the D D is what's going to open up with the tension at D4 and C5. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, good good bet here. So that's exactly right. And as you mentioned here, this this file is going to be really critical. So um, without giving it away, we're going to um, see what happens next year. Okay, so um, after rook to D1, then the opponent goes queen to C7. And so the author criticizes this move a little bit with a question mark and then a further comment. So he says that black had, black had the castle. Um, as I said, it's not wise to leave your king in the center against this guy. All right, so if he had gone ahead and, uh, and castled, White would still certainly have an advantage, but after here, now White has a, a, a terrific move that he can play to secure um, a, a winning advantage. What was that move? And it's spectacular, so I'm looking for something spectacular. <laughs> not, not something like bishop to e3. e5, maybe? e5 is okay. A little bit off the mark, though. So not a developing move. It's got to be something tactical. E5? You say uh, E5, this, this suggested earlier. Okay, no, a little off D5. the mark, though. D5. D5. Yeah, this is going to be it. All right, so after right here, then the pawn takes, and then takes right back, and then bishop takes. So, um, of course, this is intentional, but why, why on earth would we give up a pawn? Okay, we have this, this open D file, and that's neat. But after, like, um, right here, it looks like maybe just bishop comes right back, and he's got everything defended. Um, the opponent actually goes a6, so it's like, well, wait a second, what's going on here? Let's first look at something like bishop to, to c6. If something like this works, then we just lost a pawn for, for free. So what we know so far is that d5 was definitely a good move. And the question is, um, what's the reputation then if black just goes back like this? It's a little bit harder question. So if you're up for a challenge, give this one a go. I'm kind of keeping my mouth shut a little bit. What's the reputation to bishop to c6? Um, we we know that so it's it's peculiar that we're just giving up a pawn for free, right? We we weren't right here. Pawn takes, pawn takes, and then and then here, um, and then here. Now this is this is deliberate. Like he he chose to do this over a more typical continuation, something like bishop to e3 to develop a new piece. So um, we know that this is a good idea, but we're trying to understand why. And sure, certainly there's some possibility for some activity here. And he plays bishop to b5. Okay, so we're attacking this square. We're attacking this square. Um, if bishop comes back to like b7, clearly we got a nice advantage after this. But how difficult really is it for black to defend against it? He, he, he concluded it was a good idea to go a6. But why not move like bishop to c6? Kasparov's plan is airtight, and he had a plan for this. What was it? Uh, we have Rook take takes d7. What's that? Rook takes d7. Rook takes d7. Uh, this won't quite work. So I think after you go right here, probably just queen takes, and I think I think your attack is shut down. Oh, wait, hold on. Knight you might have this. to e5. No, maybe bishop captures rook works. Yeah, bishop captures work, rook. Yeah, this, this should shut that down. Now we're down three points and, and not enough compensation. Go ahead and try again. Uh, there are multiple suggestions for. Uh, yeah, queen bishop, bishop of four. And then yeah, queen a4. This is it. Queen a4 was suggested as well, multiple times in chat. Yeah, queen a4 doesn't doesn't work quite as well. And one way to kind of select these these moves bet between choosing like between uh, queen to f4 and uh, bishop to f4 is that notice that bishop f4 is more active. This creates a, a threat on the queen, whereas this move only creates a threat on the, the bishop. And so that's one way to kind of guide how to prioritize which lines you look at. So bishop to f4 is just immediately crushing. Um, after after this, then, then queen takes, and we take right here, and then this is going to be um, a, a crushing attack. There's more to say about this. For the sake of momentum, I'm going to skip over it, although I'm kind of curious myself about like how we continue after this. At any rate, I'm going to continue on. Okay, so after um, after this, the opponent goes a6. Now things are really kind of heating up. So we can we can take right here and then and then allow for, for takes right here. Um, what do we make of this? Well, let's see here. After after a6, we're going to go ahead and play bishop to f4 here. So this is this is really getting um, complicated, right? So what's what's it? Of, of this move. Well, we're pulling away the queen, 
So the, if the queen comes here, which, which it did, now we're going to go ahead and go bishop takes and then king takes. And so after this, we're, we're still down a piece. And so we kind of accomplished um, this plan in stages where we gave a proponent first for some activity. And now um, at the completion of this stage, we're still down that pawn, but we have a lot of activity and the, the king is weak. Cool. All right. So then how do we continue from here? If the attack fails, we're going to lose in the end game, by the way. So this, this has to work. Um, but this is this is really neat so far. I mean, we have the, the rook, the queen, and the knight all participating and, and working together here um, in the center and against the enemy king here. Um, how do we follow up and, and really make something of this attack? White to move. My uh, defy and this move is not rook d7. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, we, have, um, rook we have a couple of suggestions for rook e1, rook, rook e1 as well. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. So I think what I'm going to do here is um, try to maybe put like a vote. So I'm going to calculate a little bit more. So we'll leave it to those options. It is the move knight to e5, rook d1, or rook e1? What was the move that Kasparov chose? Try to take about like a minute maybe to calculate and, and think about it. And then... Can you put your answer in the chat and you can tell me which one was the, the most common? Again, your choices are knight to e5, rook e1, and rook d1. All of those are at least fine. What, what's the one that Kasparov chose? I think uh, rook to d1 is kind of thematically the most and if double your rooks, bring the last piece that's not in play into play. Sure, yeah. Seems logical. I have a comment about that. I'm going to hold it for a second. Any other ideas? I think maybe the rook reason e1. I don't like I don't like d1 because uh, I feel like black has a lot of support on d8 to just force trade offs. Exactly. Yeah, yeah that was going to be my well. comment. You nailed it. Yeah. So for that reason, we're not going to go with rook d1. How about those other choices? Knight to e5 or rook e1? Which seems better? I like knight. I think I prefer we'll rook e1. Because look, What's the continuation the after bishop d6? Yeah, knight to e5, bishop d6. Good question. So let's look at this. If here and here, oh, I missed what do you got? Mm -hmm. I miss that follow -up question. Yeah, it, yeah. I think if you go right here, you you got nothing. And and um, you know, just just kind of um, in an abstract strategic way too, it, it would probably make sense to to bring in a new piece rather than kind of use the same piece. So that's what we do here. Author says we, we didn't really um, talk. Right, there's another option yeah. that we didn't mention, which was rook f5. Someone wrote it in the chat. Uh, nice. Yeah, that comes up later. But let's look at it now. Yeah. So okay. what if, what if we play for this right now? Um, so I think first thing that comes to mind is queen to c4, guarding right here. Rook f5 might have been a decent alternative. Um, I don't sure. think that survives knight e5. Okay, okay. Could, I think right. okay. meant with knight e5. Let me think about it for a second. Good question. So, okay, if, if right here, I think this is probably crushing. Okay, so what would the reputation be? Good question. Let me think about this. So he, he didn't choose this this move. He chose he chose this move. It's one of the best in the world. Why did he not do this? Good question. Let me think. It, it might be that he it's just transposition of moves. He's planning on it as the next move anyway. Quite possibly, yeah. But well, the thing is, so actually, um, a great great point about transition. So so actually, so he goes with this. And after bishop here, now he goes rook to f five which is no longer going to allow for us to do this knight to e5 move. And so this does force queen to c4 in this position, and then we'll, we'll continue on from there. So why did he opt to do it the other way around? Why not go uh, rook to f5 with the idea of um, replying to queen c4 with knight to e5? It's a good question. I'm kind of interested in this myself. So if, if, if right here, uh, if right here, how does black save himself? I mean, black can give the pawn back. Right, he's up a pawn. He doesn't have to protect it. 
Queen E6 here. Oops. Oops. Okay, well, let's see here. So if Rook takes, we win the knight. How about knight takes F7? Rook F8, here. I think, is winning. Yikes. Yeah. So that would get, that would get shut down. So I guess, essentially, um, the the pawn is the wrong target here. Um, the the consequences of going for that are, are kind of surprisingly severe, but we don't we don't want to play for this. It's important to play for the, the, the king here. Okie dokie. Great questions, great participation. Keep it going. All right. So after um, right here, we're going to rook to e1. Now the bishop comes right here, kind of putting some pressure on on h2. But this is this is no match for the uh, the armada of, of pieces that White has going here, um, which are just working really well. And it's kind of like four on two essentially. So after bishop there, we're going to go rook to f5. Um, I normally reserve this question for the, the more advanced players. You guys have already suggested it, and this is a, this is a really solid move to, to keep everything going. And note that the, it, it's sort of less clear to, to figure out what, what this, this move might be here, because we've already got all the pieces in the game. And so once you've already achieved that, then you're going to look more at like maneuvers and selecting which one. And so it generally becomes more difficult. After right here, then queen is c4. Um, a follow-up move here now, rook to e4, putting some more pressure on the queen, uh, improving these pieces a little bit more. Queen comes back to b5, and so we've kind of pushed her out of the way. We go rook to f7, check. Now we're gaining the pawn with an amazing attack. Um, but after king to b8, how do we follow up and really win this game convincingly? It's only even material. Our, our real strength in this position is the attack, and so how do we keep it going? There's queen d6. Wait, no, that's a uh, old one. Uh, c4, queen d2, uh, queen d2. Those are the so ones so far in chat. Yeah, you guys are really suggesting really, candidate moves. Keep going. Uh, I would rook. really want to try and get my queen to e4, so maybe move the rook. Yeah, rook e6 is a suggestion. Nice. Yep, I like that you're kind of thinking too much ahead. You're going here and here. Yeah, uh, yeah, it's great, great idea. Um, let's go ahead and do it. We're gonna go rook to e6. So we're attacking right here, and we're kind of also getting ready to put some pressure on b6. Cool. So after right here, um, so now the opponent's gonna bring in their rook, um, but this is kind of too little, too late. We're already way ahead here. After this, then how about this turn? What do we do? Queen e4, fighting up. Fine. Yeah, a4, c4, queen e4. Good suggestions. Um, maybe take a minute to think about it. We'll make those as candidate moves. It's one of those three. Which one is it? Well, so if you go queen e4 and then follow by rook e8, then that would be well here mate yeah and if his rook doesn't move then we can go rook a8 and Ooh. that is still winning um maybe i'm not so sure what about here you got a follow up six oh okay i, I didn't see the queen queen is looking at e8 maybe, maybe there's a follow-up so this might be a good suggestion here. So, so here. Oh wait, hold on. You can't. You can't go to e8. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The black king is looking at e8. I didn't. I missed that. So. Yeah, I missed it for a second yeah, too. We've yeah, we've got rook. We've so got I, rook f8, and then queen d, uh, queen e7, or maybe some similar combination. So we're, so we're still we're still assessing uh, queen to e4. Is that what we're looking at? Uh yeah. I think so. Here, here. Um. So then the question is, do we have a follow-up? Um, rook to f8? I don't think it's so. Got, no, I meant rook takes d6 and then rook f8. Oh, okay. Okay, yeah, this might work. Okay, so let's do So here, 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 and he's toast. Okay, that would certainly work there. Is there anything else well, besides the, rook the, take? That's not entirely obvious, but I, I don't see a mate yet. <laughs> no, you're not. Yeah, that's, that's a great suggestion, yeah. Um, I think this should be sufficient. So that I think it looks good. Um, what else we got? I mean, you could also you could also take uh, take this rook 
but then you can take here a check. And so that should work. So queen to e4 may be sufficient. It wasn't chosen in the game, um, but I'd be curious to see if there's reputation. Let's see. Nope, he's toast there. So queen to e4 does work as well. Uh, wasn't chosen in the game, but another great suggestion. After uh, after right here, he's going to go with the move c4. Queen comes back to, to c6. And then what's a, a move here? Looking for something kind of thematic. Not looking for a deep calculation, just, just something that's sort of intuitive. Bring the knight in. There we go. Knight in. Knight to e5. Now all of Black's pieces are, are, are scrunched in. He's really on the, the defensive here. And we're going to uh, play one more move, and then Black's going to resign. Game over in one move. What, what was that? What about queen g6? Queen g6, I don't like quite as much. This is kind of similar earlier when we are talking about, um, like, why not look to f5? It's really the wrong target. Um, so we're heading in the wrong direction. We're going for the king. This probably still wins, by the way, but we're going for the king. Uh, queen b2 isn't shot? Queen b2 is solid, yeah. I'm almost out of time, so I'm just going to go right to that. Uh, same exact thing. We're just going to go uh, a queen to, to b1 here, and then black resigned. Um, i got to get going, so I'm just going to kind of speed through the ending here. Um, black resigns. He cannot allow queen takes b6, but um, the move right here to, to b5 wasn't even tried. Um, looks like after this, then takes right here, takes right here, and then here is going to be uh, the end. And then additionally, the attempt to uh, to defend with a move like bishop to c7 fails to bishop uh, rook takes b6 check. And then if if uh, bishop takes, it's mate in one, king to a7, and then also mate in one right here. Cool. So I think it's going to um, wrap it up here. Did you guys enjoy the lesson? Yeah, thank you so much, cool Ryan, for, yeah. uh, for doing that. Yeah, it was great. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, yeah, I'll be back again next week, and I'll, I'll send you guys that, that link to it. So. Cool. Thank you um, so much. Uh, see you guys next week. Yeah. Awesome. Thank, Thank you. you.